First of all, before I even get into the story, and I'm not trying to make this about me, but I want to apologize to my subscribers. I've been very busy lately, and I meant to post this story, rather this video, about a week ago. I posted a blog on October 7th about the Starbury controversy and his comments on Michael Jordan and whatnot. And the name of my blog was Starbury Sneakers Make a Comeback $15 Shoe from NBA legend Stephon Marbury 2015 Relaunch shades michael jordan for black kids getting shot and killed over jordan's ugly sneakers now of course that's all my opinion i don't personally understand why people even like michael jordan's ugly ass sneakers i guess they're kind of a status symbol or whatever i guess it's supposed to say well look i can afford to buy a really expensive pair of sneakers that are really ugly so you know i really just don't give a fuck i guess that's what you're saying when you wear those ugly ass boots they look like the boots that boxers wear if you look closely that's what jordans look like to me they're so freaking ugly they're fucking fugly and you know hip-hop wired actually wrote a little story about it and i'm gonna go ahead and read to you what hip-hop wired had to say about it all before i read to you what stefan marbury had to say about jordan and the sneakers and whatnot on Twitter and I'm gonna give my honest opinion about Starburries and whether or not I'd ever wear them because remember I said that Jordans are ugly so would I wear Stefan Marbury sneakers instead and if so or if not why I'm gonna get into that in a minute so hiphopwired.com writes and I quote Stefan Marbury's glory days in the NBA are well behind him now but he's currently a superstar in the Chinese Basketball Association, Marbury took to Twitter to not only announce the rebooting of his budget Starbury shoe and apparel line, but also took shots at Michael Jordan in the process. Since the weekend, Marbury has been fielding questions about the return of the Starbury line, which originally launched in 2006 and features sneakers of various styles priced at $15 per set. The shoe line was popular in some respects, serving as an alternative to high-end brands such as Air Jordans and products from Nike. But it was Marbury's comments about Jordan that seemed to garner the most responses. Quote, Jordan has been robbing the hood since kids dying for shoes, and the only face this dude makes is, I don't care. The time will change, end quote, tweeted Marbury on October 4th. Then Marbury added, quote, He's a follower, not even giving that any energy, said in response to a fan's tweet that LeBron James also hawks expensive shoes. Today, Marbury's anti-Jordan stances are still on display, and he largely has a support among his 76,000 followers. Does Stefan Marbury have a point? Will the Starbury line manage to capture some of the market share? Sound off in the comments. Also hit the following page to see a sketch for an upcoming Starbury sneaker. Okay, so here's the deal. If you want to see the sneaker that they're talking about, you can visit my blog. There's a link there to this article. It's on page two of this article. There's only two pages to it. I read to you page one. But what I wanted to show you guys was some of the information that Stefan Marbury posted on Twitter. Then we're going to read to you his lengthy Instagram post explaining things. Then I'll give my opinion. I know this video is going to be on the long side, but it's it's important. So Stefan Marbury said, and I quote, it's not about the shoes. It's about the thought. And somebody said to Marbury, all your posts are so real, bro. I lost a close friend to a pair of legend blue 11s. That shit is pathetic. He said, sorry for your loss, my dude. We all over it, my brother. Empower the hood. Also, somebody said to Stefan, I really can't understand why you're receiving hate from this. And he replied, ha ha, me either. Ask me, do I really care though? I think that's the part that drives them nuts. Hashtag deal with it. And he said, hate is a weak emotion. My man, you will never win against kids being killed over sneakers. No matter what you say, you will lose. So stop lying. Silence is best for you. Whoa. Okay, so then Stefan posted this message on Instagram where 
he had this to say about the line being relaunched and more. He said, and I quote, when I gave you $15 shoes in America, my mission was clear. It wasn't about basketball. It was about creating change in the sneaker game. Hashtag Nike had a media nightmare when asked, why are you selling shoes at $200 and there's a shoe for $15? Oprah reported the story. Good Morning America reported the story. Outside the Lines reported the story. Every outlet in America reported the story. This movement was creating change. The NBA called me and asked, could I wear a headband because my brand was getting free advertisement with my logo tatted on the side of my head. Some call it crazy. Some say amazing. I said, I would do no such. I have free will and this is my body. People think they know what happened in my career from what men and women reported in the media. These same people were giving gifts from Nike, etc. Why wouldn't they write depressing things? They're the press. So many people counted me out when I was down. There was no other place to look but up. LeBron James said in an interview, and I quote, I would never wear a $15 shoe. At Nike, we hold our standards high, end quote. I didn't know he owned Nike. Quote, I would rather own than be owned. Either he grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth, or he forgot he's from the same place so many of us are from. Some people confuse being a great basketball player with being a great person. It's okay, as one day I prayed those who felt this way would change this way. This isn't about LeBron James or Nike. It's bigger than basketball. This is about creating access for all, for all the struggling parents, for all the people who can't afford the high-priced sneakers and clothing. There are more people at the bottom of the pyramid than the top. Not everyone can afford $150 to $200 sneakers. We have stepped in to take on this task in providing that gateway for all of the struggling parents, women and men. Don't confuse this message with the two monsters in the now. Yes, monsters, because they are the real deal. Respect to LeBron James for what he has accomplished and what he's doing. Respect to Nike for becoming the brand of the world. There's room for more and we are coming. This isn't some endorsement deal. This is the real, end quote. Whoa, epic, epic, epic post. So here's the deal. I'm going to tell you guys the truth. Back when Starbirds were out in America, I actually owned some. I actually owned, I think I got two or three pairs. And when they relaunch, I'm going to get some more. I'm going to get some to work out in. And I might even get a pair to wear in my collection. I don't own that many shoes. I only own somewhere between a dozen and two dozen pairs of shoes. I don't own like a, a bunch of shoes. But the point is, though, I have a $100 pair of shoes in my shoe collection or whatever. In their Reeboks. Actually, I just had them on yesterday. And ironically, I originally bought them to work out in. And what ended up happening was, now remember, I bought these shoes brand new. They weren't used or anything like that. But when I was working out in them, the heel started to come off. And I only had them for, I don't know, maybe a week or two. And I didn't send them back, you know, to the company that I bought them from, which is a very famous, actually probably the most famous sneaker place online, I would think. I'm not going to say the name of the company. But basically, I ended up gluing them. And they've been fine ever since. And I've had them, you know, for a minute. And they've been straight. But I remember thinking to myself, like, damn, I paid like $100 for these freaking sneakers. Like $99.99. And the damn heel started to become attached. Detached, rather. And I'm like, what <laughs> what the hell? What type of standards was this made to? Am I not supposed to work out in them? I thought that I could do that in them. Like cross training, whatever. But anyway, I stopped working out in them. And I just wear them, wear them now. I never wore them to work out again after I glued them. And they've been fine. But I said, okay, apparently you can't, you know, do anything too strenuous or whatever in these types of shoes because <laughs> they start to come apart. <sighs> and I would have <laughs> I would have loved to have been wearing my fifteen dollars Starbucks because remember I had them years ago. So I got rid of them by now because they were old shoes. You know, I replaced my shoes basically. They had to be rotated. But yeah, years ago I used to own some Starbucks. And in my opinion, they're good shoes. They basically look and feel 
like Reeboks, Nikes, whatever you're going to end up paying the $100 or whatever like I paid for those Reeboks. And, <laughs> you know, I don't work for any of those companies. They don't give me shit. No company has ever given me a free pair of shoes. No company has ever specifically called me out for a discount and said, look, you know, we're going to give you 50% off for these shoes because you're a blogger and you talked about our shoes or anything like that. No company has ever given me the hookup. Why in the world should I pay more money than I have to for your sneakers and you haven't done shit for me? In other words, if I like your shoes enough, I'm willing to pay more for them. But I'm not going to buy a pair of shoes just for the sake of them being expensive. I have to actually like them, and I'm very picky with shoes. I remember when I saw Soldier Boy shoes, the ones that light up on the bottom. I didn't really like them, but I just did a video about them anyway. Then I went back and looked at them again, and I was like, damn, the red and white ones are fire. I must have been sleeping. I was like, oh, shit. You know, so I really, I really, really like one of the pairs, and I think that they're like $180. But at the end of the day, money is just, you know, linen and cotton. A lot of people say it's paper. It's actually, I think, made from linen and cotton. But basically, money is just a piece of paper, as they say. So I don't really value money. I think if a person wants to spend a million dollars on a pair of shoes, that's perfectly fine if that's what they want to do. I don't really care but on a personal level if I don't have to pay more then I won't because I don't really care what anybody has to say about the way that I dress on a personal level if you think that something I'm wearing is ugly or ridiculous then that's your problem not mine I like Stefan Marbury did not grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth as he mentioned in the story and you know as long as I don't have to pay more than I won't because what's the point well, just so somebody could say, hey, I know how much those cost and yell out the price. So I'm dressing for another man to compliment me. As a heterosexual man, I don't care what another man thinks about the way I dress, especially with all these dudes running around with their pants falling off their ass. All these sissy boys. See, now I'm taking the story in a whole nother direction. But my point is this, though. I don't dress for other men. So if some man doesn't like my shoes when I get my new crisp Starburys, because like I said, I have a hundred dollar pair of shoes in my my collection. I also have shoes that are more like around seventy dollars. You know the the prices vary because I buy what I like. I don't buy things because of the price. Would I ever own a two hundred dollar pair of shoes? Yes, I would. Have I ever owned a pair of two hundred dollar shoes? Nope, not yet. How about a hundred fifty dollar pair? Nope, never. The most I've ever ever spent in a pair of shoes are the shoes that I said I wore yesterday. The hundred dollar pair of shoes that the fucking heel started to become detached on. The ones that had the glue. Yeah, isn't that something? My most expensive pair of shoes, you could say, were a piece of shit. And this is just keeping it real. And I don't really think they were a piece of shit. I'm just saying that that would be somebody's impression. And they were Reeboks. As a matter of fact, I'll say which kind they were. They were them joints with the with the zigzag heel, what, what they got, zig sonics or some shit like that. Those joints. Anyways, my whole point is this: I'm not a quote unquote sneakerhead. I don't dress for other men, and I know a lot of you dudes in the internet do, and you post pictures of your sneaker like the way that some dudes will show off their girlfriend, like it's like a trophy. And hey, man, whatever makes you happy, as long as you're not fucking with people because of their shoes, which a lot of people are concerned about that. Like people's kids being made fun of and whatnot. And if people are making fun of your kids, let's say at school, for example, they need to be expelled, not ex not suspended, but expelled because the whole poor shaming thing is really out of hand. But not only do poor people wear them because like I'm not really actually poor, but I will be buying some damn Starbursts when they come out because I saw some pictures and they were freaking fire. Some of them were insane, like really, really nice shit. If only $15. Why wouldn't I indulge? Like I said, I'm thinking I'm going to have to get maybe two, three pair. And I support his mission. And I hope someday to own my own sneaker line. Not to compete with him, but to add on. And yes, the prices will be similar. This is all my opinion. Let me know what you think about it all below. Be sure to subscribe to the Meat Magazine YouTube channels. Visit meatmagazine.blogspot.com for more.